Amen. Um, welcome, guys, to the Bible study, uh, to Friday Night Bible Study, and we're continuing to do the live stream, and I just want to welcome everybody that's joining us, and welcome everybody, as, as we know, these go out to, um, you know, Facebook and YouTube, just all those that are streaming, that, that watch it and, and view it, um, just, we just pray that just, that this message today can uh, just touch the hearts of people out there, and um, we're just thankful for uh, my family. We're thankful for a lot of things. We're thankful for our health. Thankful for uh, you know everything that God has brought us through. You know we we're going through some trials a while back, like I mentioned last week, and we went through some some things. But I know that that um, like the Bible tells us, you know we're not the only ones going through it. Our fellow brothers and sisters are also out there going through it as well. You know, and and I know there's some dealing with uh, more. Uh, bigger trials and tribulations in their life right now. You know, I know today was the services for uh, Pastor Frank's wife and uh, our hearts and prayers go out to them and him and his family and Pastor as that's his sister. And uh, We just continue to pray that God comforts them and uh, just brings peace in their heart at this time. Amen. And we continue to pray for all those in the church, just our fellow brothers and sisters. We know there's a lot out there that, that, um, that we need to pray for on uh, Sister Espy, we, we continue to pray for her and, and her her health and um, all those that are that are sick in the church right now or just out or those that are just just some are just staying home right now. But we continue to look up, uh, lift up our whole congregation, Amen. And of course, this nation and this world as this situation that we're all dealing with. And um, I just want to also just. Uh, uh, let everybody know, you know, we're, we're still praying for all you guys. Everybody uh, in the Bible study there, we continue to lift you guys up in prayer every day. And um, we want to just also just do, um, start out by doing a couple of announcements. And just to let everybody know, um, Wednesday service still right now is live stream. Actually, every service is live stream right now, including this Bible study, of course. But on uh on Sundays, we do live service there at the church in person, but it's outside right now. We're just trying to stay outdoors, trying to stay separated a little bit because that's kind of what's currently allowed right now in the state. So we're, 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 that's what we're doing as far as church services on Sunday. And um, just to continue to let you guys know that tomorrow there will be prayer, 7.30 to 8 at the church there. And um, everybody's still... Um, Pitching in, I know there's a lot of people going down there to help out with the uh, with the work at the church that everybody's doing right now, and uh, I know it's greatly appreciated. And uh, if, if nobody's busy, if they got the time, they can go down there, lend their hand, and help out there. And also, um, any other announcements? Tomorrow at ten, we're And all, and that's on Facebook. Um, on Facebook tomorrow at ten o'clock. There's a women's discipleship tomorrow and that'll be on Facebook so all the women out there if you know just just get tuned in to that and uh, we, we we know that the it's important that we stay tuned in to just tuned in to the Word of God amen even though right now like on Wednesday but you know I know I know a lot of us right now are holding back on Sunday service and things like that for various reasons but it's very important that we stay tuned in and that we we keep, we keep just pushing forward for God. We stay persistent in it, amen. When they got these live streams, men's discipleships and women's discipleships and, and marriage things, we got we to gotta continue to push forward and, and, and stay focused on God, amen. And also just to remind everybody, um, as far as the, the, the site to, um, to online, I should say, I, I think I could say online, for, the, for your tithings and your offerings, um, that the address for that is glory to Jesus 77 at Yahoo and that's glory and then the number two Jesus 77 at Yahoo you can uh, do your tithings that way just remember in the memo section you want to mark whether it's, it's an offering a tithing missionary giving or what it's going to amen and um, uh, but on Sunday like I said we're doing outdoor service you can take your tithings still put it in the envelope if you want to do it that way not a problem um, but um, like I said just we just got it's, it's important that we just I, I just encourage everybody just to stay focused on God and just keep moving forward 
and uh, just keep serving, amen. And tonight, we're going to go into uh, to a lesson tonight. This is a lesson that, tonight's not a, 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 an open or free lesson. All the Bible studies um, are going over this lesson tonight, but it's a good lesson. It's a good lesson, and it's something that we went over before, and um, it's something that um, that's always good to um, to it's always a good message for us amen and if you have your Bibles you can go ahead and turn to uh, the book of first Samuel chapter 17 we're gonna be in verse 26 through 37 first Samuel chapter 17 amen and the title of tonight's lesson is what are the Giants that are challenging you in 2020. Like I said, we went over the, uh, these lessons before about giants in our life, and, and we look at what we're dealing with right now as far as this year of 2020, and we're looking at the giants that we're dealing with right now because how many of us know that even though we're in this pandemic and a lot of us are, are, are staying home and, and just from different things, a lot of things are closed down again. There's, there's not there's no more social gathering right now and it's very limited any gathering that there is and and I think we all know that during this time there are still giants in our life there are still trials and tribulations that we go through other than this pandemic that's happening around us there's still things that we're going through other issues and people got um, financial issues and marital issues and health issues and other things that people are dealing with right now amen and that's what we're going to talk about because when we talk about giants, you know, it's easy to talk about a giant. It's easy to talk about giants in our life until that giant shows up at your doorstep, amen. Until that giant is right there uh, on your porch, amen. And a lot of times when uh, just kind of like the story that we're going to go into right now, a lot of times when we get faced with a giant, it's usually when we're in a valley. When we're in that valley, that's when that giant tends to show up. And we're going to talk about about uh, about gi the giants in our life, amen, and about the tactics to use when we get when that giant comes and and, and knocks at our door, and and tries to attack us in, in in our finances or our health or our family or our marriage, whatever the situation may be. That's what we're going to talk about is the giants that challenge us in 2020 and the tactics that we need to use against fighting these giants. Amen. And when we talk about, of course, giants in our life, what better story than the story of David and Goliath? And I know all of us have heard the story. We know the story, but we're going to go over that story tonight. We're going to talk about David and Goliath. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 26 through 37. And we're going to get into that scripture right now. But before we get into it, let's open up in prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, Lord God. And we, Father God, just ask you first and foremost, Lord God, just to forgive us for anything that maybe we have done wrong in our walk with you, Father God. Forgive us in any ways that we may fall short father god maybe in any ways that we don't even see that maybe we're not approaching right or that we're not doing right father god we pray for your guidance and your direction father god as we ask for forgiveness in any way we fall short lord father we thank you for our salvation we thank you for the sacrifice that was made for us we thank you for the cross and lord we thank you for this day today father we thank you, Father, for our families, our homes, and we just pray today that you continue, Father, to move in a mighty way, Father, in the way that we know that you can, Father. I pray tonight as we go over your word, Father God, that this message, Father God, that it just go out, Father God, throughout the land, whoever is listening, Father God, and that it just, Father God, just go into the heart of everybody that's listening, Father God, that it penetrate the heart, Father God, in the ears, Father, that that inner ear that we have lord god receives your word tonight father i pray that you anoint me father god that you father anoint every person out there lord god to be receiving to your word as we thank you and honor you in jesus mighty name amen and again like i said when we talk about 
David and Goliath. We know that the Bible tells us that when this battle took place, that you know the the men of Israel they were standing on on one mountainside, and the Philistines were standing on another mountainside, and between them was one big valley. Just like I mentioned earlier, a lot of times when the giants come out, it's when we're in a valley. And the Bible tells us that as this battle, what they're preparing for a battle, they were on each one side and the valley was in the middle. And the Bible goes on to tell us that this giant uh, of a man, the Bible even says how, how big he was. It, it, it explains it in like cubic size. And he was like nine feet or, or something like that. And it says that this this. Goliath, this big, uh, they called them, some of them referred to him in the Bible as a champ. And he steps out and this, and this huge figure comes out and it tells us that, that as he steps out from his army, from the Philistines, that, that he's not only big, but this man, he has a bronze helmet on. And he has bronze shoulder pads on. And he, he's not only big, but he, he, he's dressed well. And he looks the part. And he has a sword and he has a javelin and he has a... He has a shield and he's ready to come out and he's ready to fight. And it tells us that, that he comes out and he, and he takes a look at the, at the other army and, and, he, and he starts calling, calling somebody out. And he says, uh, who wants to fight him? Who's willing, who's mad enough, who's willing to take him on? And everybody saw the size of him and, and he even said, you know, anybody that defeats me, if they defeat me, my army will serve you. But if I defeat that pers per person, then you guys will serve us. And it tells us that during this time that, you know, the, the, this Goliath, he's calling somebody out and everybody's there. And it tells us that David, that David was there and that David heard, uh, heard what, the, what this giant was saying. And, and, and as he's there... Uh, 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 Saul's there and, and, he's, and he's saying you know who, who wants to come out and who wants to, to fight this giant you know whoever comes out and defeats this giant you know I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give him riches and I'm gonna give him the, the, the hand to my daughter in marriage and exclude him from taxes and, and all these different things and David hears that and David's a little guy he's a short guy and David hears it and he's like what what did you say you know what are you gonna give and David steps out amongst all these other soldiers. This little small guy steps out to go and fight this, this, this giant. And David, he, he's the youngest of, of his brothers. And, and it tells us that, that, that David was only there because as, as David was back tending to the, to the sheep, like his dad asked him to, his dad, Jesse, had told him, I want you to go to where the battle's at. I want you to go take them some supplies. Take your brothers some food. Because uh, 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 David's older brothers, they were there in the battle. And, 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 and he, as Jesse tells his son David, go and take them food and supplies. David goes and that's what he was doing there. He was there just delivering some stuff. But he sees what's going on. He sees what's taking place. He hears what the giant's saying. He hears what Saul said about anybody who takes him on. And David, his ears and, and his heart, and he's like, what? I'm willing to take on that giant. He knew the giant was four or five times taller than him, bigger than him in every way. But David was ready to do it. And that's where it brings us to here in, in, in our scripture um, in 1 Samuel chapter 17. And it says this, we're going to go into our scripture 1 Samuel 17, 26 through 37. It says, Then David spoke to the man who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is the uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in this manner, saying, so shall it be done for the man who kills him. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the man, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, Why do you come here? 
David's brother was already upset right there at him. David, what are you doing here? He already had him counted out already. When David stepped up and said, what, you, nobody wants to take him on? The king's willing to do this? And his brother tells David, what are you even doing here? That's what it's telling us here. Why did you come down here, it says. And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, What have I done now? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from him toward another, and he said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first ones did. Now when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul. And he sent for him. Then David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight him. For you are a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion, from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go and the Lord be with you. There's some key stuff in that, in that text right there. And we know as it goes on in, in this chapter, uh, it goes on to tell us in verse 40 that David, unlike this Goliath, David didn't go out there with the sword. He didn't go out there with the javelin. He didn't go out there with looking all fancy like this guy. The Bible tells us that David picked up five stones, that he had a sling in his bag, and David went and he picked up five stones. He didn't go and pick up a javelin or a sword. He went for five stones. And verse 40 goes on to say, Then he took his staff in his hand, and he chose for himself five stones from the brook, and put them in a shepherd's bag, in a pouch which he had, and his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. This is a good example here of talking about facing a giant. Because many of us in our life, have faced giants. Some of us may be facing one right now. But we face a lot of different giants. Many of us can, uh, it's different, different giants for different people. Depression, unemployment, bills, debt, ha bad habits, past failures, discouragement, anger, addiction, temptation, rejection, weakness. Our giant can be many of these things. A lot of us actually during this time are dealing with the same giant. A lot of us right now are dealing with this pandemic that's going on around us. And we're all dealing with it in, in different ways of staying home. And some of us can't see certain family members. And, and you can't really go here and you can't really go there. And a lot of people are saying, you know, we're always talking about this COVID thing. We're always talking about this. And a lot of times the, even the sermons are related to it. And, and it's always related to it. And it's always talking about this. But the reality is this is where we're at right now. This is the situation that we're dealing with in this life right now. Because no matter where you go, it's talked about, it's there, this is closed, we can't do this, we can't do that, and it revolves around it. And that's the giant that a lot of us are facing right now. And that giant of that pandemic that is happening, that giant can bring a giant of fear, it can bring a giant of worry, it can bring a, a giant of tragedy. But it's a giant that we're all dealing with right now in our lives. But here in this story... David, he, he paints a picture for us here. He paints a picture of 
fighting this giant of something that appears bigger than we are. Something that may look like we ain't got no chance or no shot against it. He paints a picture of, of fighting this giant. And as he takes his sling and his five stones to, to defeat this giant, we can think that, that, you know, these five stones, we have our stones also. And we're going to talk about those stones or those tactics to use when we're up against these giants. One of the, one of the, the, the tactics or the stone that, that we need to use when we're up against our giant. The first tactic or the first stone, I should say, that we use when we're fighting our giants, first of all, is staying or is plugging into the source, or I should say, staying plugged into the source. And we all know that the source that we're talking about is God. Staying plugged into God. That's the first thing we need to do when we're up against these giants. Notice how David said, and when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant David has killed both lion and bear and this uncircumcised Philistine, this giant will be like one of them. Seeing how he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion, from the paw of the bear, will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. We notice here on the story, notice how David didn't say, I delivered the, I delivered the sheep from, from that bear, or I delivered the, the, the sheep from, from that, that lion. He didn't say it was me, I delivered it, I did it on my power. He doesn't say that here in the story. David says that that he did these things because he says, The Lord delivered me. That's how I was able to do that. That's how I was able to strike down that lion and that bear. Because the Lord had delivered me. Even it tells us in the text that Saul uh, even told David when he was telling him, when he was listening to what David was telling him. That the Lord, the Lord had delivered him. That it was the power of God that he was plugged in to the main source. He had a relationship. He was plugged into God. He said, he delivered me. That's how I did this. And when Saul heard it, Saul heard him say that. Saul goes on to tell him, go and the Lord will be with you. He hears him. He hears his heart. He hears where he's at, his passion. And he says, you know what, go ahead. He didn't tell him, no, you can't do it. Even though he told him earlier. He had told him earlier in the story, you're just a youth. You're just a youngster. And this giant over here, he's been, he's been a man, a, a, a fighting man since he was a youth. But then he hears David, well, how David talks. The boldness and the courage of David. And he hears how, he, how, how he's ready to approach this giant in this situation. That he's not there saying, oh, I don't know, maybe I can take him. I don't know, maybe I can do this. He says, no, I struck down the lion. I struck down the bear. And it was because God delivered me. So when Saul hears this, that's when Saul says, go ahead. And may the Lord be with you. Because he sees the source that David had. He sees that the source is what give, is giving David the power. What's giving him the strength. And that source is God, amen. It's like when you look at an electrical appliance, you look at a, a refrigerator or a microwave or anything electronic, it has to stay plugged in in order to get power. If it's not plugged in, it ain't doing anything. It ain't gonna do nothing for you. But when it's plugged in to the right source, it has strength, it has power, it has the ability to do things, amen. He teaches us here, right here in this part, stay plugged in. That's the, the first stone that we, we got to have against those giants that come in our life. Stay plugged in. The Bible goes on to tell us, we know that the Bible tells us that that in, in the story also in the book of Samuel, it says that 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 David here, that uh, uh, 
David that uh, Samuel had uh, had heard from the Lord, and he said, you know, he, he, you know, there's gonna be one of Jesse's sons that's gonna be the the the, the king. He's gonna be the special one. And he said, go. Uh, the Lord said, go over there to the house and take this oil with you, and and, and, and pour this oil over them. And, and it says that that he went and he called one of, of of Jesse's sons, and and no, it wasn't him. And he called the other one, no, it wasn't him, and no, it wasn't him. This is something we talked about in one of the Bible studies a a, a few uh, weeks or months back. When he, when he says, no, it's not him, it's not him. Is, is that is or any other sons? And Jesse says, no, I got one more son, my youngest. He's the, the, the sheep herder out there. And even the brothers of the man, you, surely you're not talking about David over here. And he comes in and, 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 the, and the oil flows over him and, and, and the Holy Spirit just comes over him. The Spirit of the Lord came over him. And he was anointed, Amen. But when we stay plugged in and even in the face of a giant, we are also anointed. Just like David was anointed when they when they called him in and they poured this oil and they said, he's the one. When we're serving God and we're out there and and and, and, and we're not, but when we go to church and when we when we read our word and when we pray, we're not doing it just for fun. We're doing it to stay plugged in, but also we're anointed. And, the, and, and us being anointed and just staying focused and plugged in with God, that's what's going to get us to face that giant. That's what's going to give us the victory over the giant. Amen. And when we talk about these stones or these tactics, we, 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 we just talked about being plugged in and staying focused on God. But uh, the second stone we talk about when we're facing our giants, our second tactic is using the right weapon. And what I'm talking about here is prayer. Using the right weapon. The Bible tells us that's our, our, our offensive weapon. We know about the, the armor of God in Ephesians. The different, the helmet of salvation, the, the, uh, the breastplate of righteousness, everything. But it tells us about prayer, about the word of God. Using the word of God. That's the best weapon we can use against these giants. Amen. We talked a few, uh, when we went over this David story a few months back, we talked about a battle in, in a chapter 16 of Samuel, 1 Samuel, that it talked about David when he when him and his soldiers were, we talked about they were coming back from a battle and they were going back to Ziklag and when they found their wives and their sons and they were gone, they weren't dead but they were taken. They were taken and, and David's men had turned against them. They were ready to kill David. And we talked about this. Remember we said, what did David do? Did he, did he go and take off running or anything? No, he prayed. That's when we went over the lesson about, about that David strengthened himself. And he strengthened himself through prayer. That's the best, one of the best tactics we can use. We gotta stay in prayer. That's the best weapon we can always use. Like I talked about last week when, when, when I was going through this stuff and I was going through this battle, I was just praying and praying and, and I felt like I was getting worse and I was praying and, and, and that spirit of fear was, I was fighting it and, I, and it was trying to attack me and I was going through this spiritual battle, but I kept praying and praying and I kept, I kept saying, you know what, I'm a child of God and I'm going to keep praying, I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. I turn on the TV and I see about all these people dying from this thing and everything. And it's trying to come over and I say, I'm not going to give up. I said, Lord, I know you have more things for me to do. I know you still got things for me to do. But I kept praying. Kept moving forward. In the book of Psalms, chapter 57, verse 1, it says, be merciful to me. David says, Oh God, be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you. And in the shadow of your wings, I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed by. I'm going to stay trusting in you till this giant passes by. Psalms 59 verse 16 says, But I will sing of your power. Yes, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning, for you have been my defense and my refuge in the day of my trouble. 
Prayer is the always the one of the most important stones, one of the most important tactics we use against our giant. Like I always say, memorize some scripture. Because if it's one thing that just, I mean, and the Bible tells us that 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 the, the demons tremble at the word of God, at Jesus. And that's why I always say, memorize some scripture, because when we pray and we're up against a giant, when we're in a battle, we gotta we gotta use scripture. Just like Jesus used when he was in the desert for 40 days. He used scripture. And the devil fleed. But we got to use scripture. We got to keep moving forward. This thing that, that I went through last month or just a while back with this sickness and I got over it. And, and, and this past week, uh, my daughter got a real bad ear infection. And, and it was hurting her and she was in pain and she was crying and because of the ear infection it gave her a fever and and, and she had some rough nights and we're and, and again i think man i'm still we're still going through it i'm better now but now she's she's hurting she she's not feeling well now and i said man we're just being attacked and attacked and attacked and i feel like like my family was been in a spiritual battle we've been going through some trials I know people go through worse things at worse times. There's some people out there dealing with some other things. But man, we've been going through some things. And to see my daughter hurt like that, I, I prayed for her. I prayed over her. And, 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 and the thought comes, man, we're just, we're just battling right now. But I keep praying and I kept using scripture. As the Bible tells us, you know, you know, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Because it is written. Greater is he in me than he that is in the world, because it is written. I serve a mighty God, because he is the way, the truth, and the life, and it is written. This we have been called to. He has sacrificed for us, and left us as an example to follow in his steps, because it is written. And that's what we got to use to fight. We got to use prayer and we got to use the word of God. That's how we take down these giants. That's how we're slinging those stones. We got to stay plugged in. We got to stay focused. We got to stay in prayer. Amen. The third one that we talk about, the, well, let's talk about the third tactic or our third stone against these giants. And what I'm talking about here is God's reputation. We got to remember about God's reputation. It's a priority. His glory. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 46 says, This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. You know, when we when we take a look at this story, when David stepped out, when he when he when he said, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna take down this giant. I may be small, I may be short, everybody got me counted out, but you know what? God is with me, he delivered me, I'm gonna take on this giant. Maybe David was thinking, you know what, let me step out and let, let me show God's reputation. Let me show how powerful and how strong my God is, because he is with me in this battle. Let, let the people see God's glory. Like David said, he wasn't taking the credit. He wasn't taking the credit that he defeated the bear. He defeated the lion. He might have been thinking, you know what? I, I want to step out because I, I, I'm not going to take credit. I want to show these people that when you're plugged into God, you can take down any giant. When you're plugged into the main source, when you got a relationship with Jesus, when you're in prayer, when, when you're in the Word, you can take down any giant, amen. And that reputation of God, uh, many have seen it. Many see God's glory. And I'm, what I'm talking about in our life also, when people see God's glory and they see His reputation, a lot of times they see it from our lives. They see it from the things that God removed us from. They see it from the way we've changed, how God has changed our hearts. They see this guy, he's no longer uh, living on the streets no more. This guy is no longer a heroin addict no more. This guy ain't going back to prison or to jail anymore. 
This guy is no longer robbing people or burning people. This person is not, over here not talking about people behind their back. Because when God has truly, truly just came into your life and took over your heart, those things are done. Even the little things. Even the little things like talking behind somebody's back or, or, or going and spreading rumors about somebody and talking about people and shining certain people on, doing things like that. We don't do that no more. We don't do those things no more. And if other people do it to you, then you know what? Hey, praise the Lord. I'm going to continue to pray for him. I'm still going to love that guy. I'm still going to love that sister or the brother. Because that's how it is when, when we've changed, when, when, when God's reputation gets glorified. Because someone was true, their heart is truly changed. No matter what takes place around them, no matter how people are around them or to them, their heart is already changed. And like I said, maybe that, that's what David saw here, that opportunity to, that, that people would see God's glory. And people see it, like I said, in, in marriages. Marriages are restored. I know mar my marriage got restored. People see it in different ways. And that's one thing that we need to keep in mind when we're going up against our giants. That, you know, people see God's glory out of it. People will see, man, this guy was going against something. This guy has been going to church and been serving God. And he was put up against this and that and all these other things. And, and there he is still serving God, still going to church, still praying. And man, he got over it. He got through that valley. Now he's back on the mountaintop. And they see, man, God, man God's just good to this guy. Because he didn't let up. Because of the strength he had. Because God delivered this man or woman. And when, we, and when we talk about, about God's glory, <clears throat> excuse me, we see here in the battle that David, as he goes into the battle, he probably thinks that there, he knows probably there's a chance that he's going to die. He looks at this giant and probably thinks, there's a chance that I might lose my life. But David was probably thinking, he was still willing to give his life for the reputation of God. Amen. When I hear that about when I when I think about that about about David um, still willing to go into the battle, whether he lives or whether he dies. He was willing to die for the reputation of God. He was willing to die for God's glory. When I think about that, it reminds me all the time always of uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they go up and they tell the king they're not going to worship his bronze statue or his gold statue. They said, we're not going to do it. God's going to save us. They said, we're going to throw you in the furnace. They said, go ahead and throw us in the furnace. They said, God's going to save us. Th turn it hot, whatever. Throw us in the furnace. God's going to save us. But I always love how they say, but even if he doesn't, we're still not going to praise your God because we have our mighty God. Even if he doesn't, they knew God was still with them. And it makes me even think about when, when, when I was sick and all these things were going through my mind. And I said, man, whatever happens, I know that God is still with me. I know that God is still with me. Amen. And when we talk about the next stone, uh, uh, the next tactic. Number four, we, we can talk about passion. When we talk about passion, because fighting our giants, you know, it, 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 there's a passion that we got to have to continue to keep serving God. And God fills us with that spirit. Like, like David, when he goes into the battle, no one was betting on David. No one was was thinking David was going to win against this Philistine. Even his own brother, even his own brother had even told him, what are you doing here? They didn't even encourage him. They discouraged him, if anything. But it was the passion that he had. Going back to the, to the text, I said how, how, how Saul even told him, man, you're a youngster. You can't do it. You're young. But he heard the passion David had. 
he heard the passion that was in his heart, the passion for God. When he said, all these things I've done with these, when I saved my flock and the, the lion and the bear, all these things were only because God was with me. That's when, they, that's when, when, when Saul told him, man, go, go fight. And may God be with you. Because God saw the passion that was in his heart. And that's what it is when we're serving God. People see that passion. People see how, how we we willing to sacrifice things. Sometimes we got to go here, we got to go there. But you know what? No, I got to do this. I got Wednesday service or I, or I got men's discipleship or, or Sundays. No, we can't go there Sundays. I mean, yeah, of course, sometimes we go on and on. Uh, on things you know with our family every once in a while but you know every day every day of our life our life our, our main focus our priority is serving God the things we do the way we talk the way we act the places we we choose not to uh, uh, place ourselves in it's because of the passion that we have and when people see that passion they know you're not playing games with God they know you're not just playing games. Oh, this guy's a part-time Christian. No, they see, man, this guy got some passion. This man or this woman lives for God. It's our passion. Amen. And when we talk about the final stone, our final tactic, we talk about persistence. Because when we talk about persistence, it's about knowing no matter what we go through that we keep moving forward. That we don't give up. You know, we look at the story and we see that the, the Bible here tells us that David, he, he, he didn't pick up one stone. It didn't tell us that he picked up one stone and he threw it. It, tell us, it tells us that he picked up five stones. Why do you think that is? Why do you think David picked up five stones. Maybe it was because God was trying to teach us something. Trying to teach him something. Not to give up. Not to give up with one. It may take more than one prayer. It may take more than one apology. We may get knocked down once or twice. But I think he's trying to tell us, don't give up. Don't quit. Keep loading those rocks. Keep swinging that sling. And keep fighting, amen. Because when we've been delivered by God, like David here, we can take down those giants. David, when he goes out into battle, he didn't go with the bronze helmet like Goliath had. He didn't go with the big shoulder pads. He didn't go with the javelin. He didn't go with all this, all this stuff. All he did was he went with five rocks and a sling. But that wasn't the biggest weapon he had. Because the biggest thing he had in his arsenal it was that, is that he was plugged in with God. He had five stones, but he had God. And, and this ain't just some... some uh, motivational speech or some lift me up speech. This is the truth. This is what God teaches us in his word. That no matter what we go through, when we get to that giant, when that giant decides to show up on our porch and that giant decides to show up in our health and that giant decides to show up in our marriage and show up in our mind and we're in that valley and we're battling Remember the tactics that we need to use. Remember the stones that we need to use. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 45 says, Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of the hosts of God, of the armies of Israel, who you have defied. He's telling them, I, I, I've come in the name of God who you are against, who you do not serve, who you laugh at or turn your back on. You can have all that stuff. You can have all that exterior stuff. 
You can be as big as you want to be. But I come with God. I come with a simple weapon, but God in my heart. And God with me. Amen. And it tells us here in the story that it goes on in the Bible to tell us that David, as he defeats him, he cuts the head off of that giant. He doesn't just wound him. He doesn't just knock him down. But he cuts the head off of that giant. To show that not only not, it wasn't him. He, he shows that <coughs> he doesn't have the victory. But God has the victory. Because what people thought was a, 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 a big uh, situation. Or maybe what somebody may think is something that you can't get through. Something that you can't overcome. Something that's going to take you down. When we cut the head off of that giant, it shows how powerful and how mighty God truly is. Amen. Because when we're serving Him, He is always there with us. And when we stay focused on God, we can face our giants no matter how small we look. And this lesson here is just to to continue to encourage us from those giants that we face in our life and just remember when we when that giant shows up on your porch or that giant shows up in your marriage or your health or your finances or or your family or wherever that giant may show up at we got to remember our stones our five stones we got to remember to fight we got to remember our, our stones stay plugged into God Choose the right weapon, which is prayer. Seize God's moment, His reputation, His glory. Stay persistent and stay focused on God and we will be able to cut the head off of that giant. Like I said, right now we're, we're all dealing with this pandemic that's going around and I know it's getting close to home for a lot of people. And, and, and it's just, it's, it's everywhere you turn now. But this is the time that we got to stay focused. We got to keep those five stones in our hand right now. Don't let them go. Don't drop them. Hold them. Hold that sling. Because what's going on, we got to keep fighting. We got to use these stones to keep fighting and not give up and not quit. Like I said before, this is a test for all of us. This is a test for the non-believer, and this is a test for the believer. Where is everybody going to stand? The ones that don't believe, are you going to open your eyes? Are you going to open that inner ear and hear the, the truth, the word of God, and realize what's going on? The ones that are believers, are you going to stay strong? Are you going to hold your ground? Are you going to stay in the fight? And we got to stay persistent. Keep holding on those five stones like David did. Because we're going to use them against that giant when that giant shows up. Amen? Amen. That concludes the lesson tonight. I'm going to go ahead and just close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I, I, I come before you tonight, my God, and I thank you, Lord God, for your word ministering to us, Father God, during this time, Father God, that we may be going through separate situations. Maybe we have our own separate giants in our life. But we know that we all face one giant right now that surrounds the land, Father God. That it has people in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in chaos and, in, and just a, afraid and different things, Father God, that it places in people's hearts. But Father, I pray, Lord God, that you continue, Lord God, just to give us the strength, Father. Continue, Father God, just to move in our life. I pray for everybody out there right now, Father God, that's listening to this. Everybody that's going to stream it, whether they're listening now or some will stream it on Facebook or YouTube. I pray, Lord God, that, Lord, you bless them in their life. That they receive this message. That they take it. That they receive it in their heart, Lord God. That it doesn't just go in one ear and come out the other. But, Father, pierce their heart with it, Lord. That when that giant shows up, Lord, that they use the stones, Father God, 
that they use the tactics, Father, that you have provided there for us. That they stay plugged in, that they get plugged into you, Father. As I said last week, Lord God, I, I'm, I'm not looking for the signs anymore, Lord. If, if people can't see the signs and what's taking place, I, I, man, there, there's a lot of blind people out there. And Lord, I, 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 we're just listening for the trumpets now, Father. We're just listening, Father God, for the trumpets, Lord God. That when it's time, Father, to call the church home, Lord. Father, I pray for all those right now, Father, that are sick in body. Those that are dealing, Father God, with, with situations in their body. I pray healing upon them. I pray wherever they're at, wherever they're lying, wherever they're at in their home right now, Father God, that you bring healing upon them, Lord God, that you... Breathe a fresh breath of healing over them, Lord God. That your hand of healing just be upon them, Lord. That you strengthen them, that you guide them, that you give them direction, Father God, in their life, Lord. For the families out there, Lord God, the families that during this stay home thing, the families, Lord God, that are, are getting into different situations with one another, maybe, maybe even marriages, Lord. I pray for peace in the home, Lord God. I pray for peace, for love, Father God, happiness in the homes during this time, Lord. That you continue, Lord, through everything to bring restoration in families, in marriages, in homes, in the health of people, Lord. Continue to restore their health. All those that are going through financial issues, those that are, 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 are going through different things that are ready to make changes in their life right now. Maybe, maybe they're moving to a new location. Maybe they're kind of starting a fresh start somewhere, Lord God. Just continue to open doors for those people, Lord. Bring them peace in their heart, Lord God. Continue to guide them and direct them and minister to them, Lord. We pray blessings upon everybody, Father. Everybody across the land, Lord. I pray for the salvation of all those that are lost. My family members, my loved ones, my friends, and everybody that is lost, Father. We pray that laborers come by their way, that, that they cross the path of somebody that is saved, Father God. That they give them the word of God and that they receive the word of God. Father, I pray, Lord God, for this nation and this world, Father. That, Lord, that, that, that a treatment or a vaccination or, or something to help the people can, can be introduced to the public, Lord God. That it can be released for the people, Lord God. But we know that it is your will. Whatever happens, we know that it is all your will, Father. And we trust in you. We have all the faith in you. And Father, we just pray that you continue, Father, just to pour your spirit upon our hearts. Continue to let our, 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 our just, just, just fill us with the spirit, Lord God, that our cup runneth over, Father. With your love and your peace and your joy. Father, we thank you, Lord, and we give you the praise, and we give you the glory, and we give you all the honor, Father. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. That concludes the Bible study tonight, and I just want to just, uh, just thank everybody just for tuning into the message tonight, and I just pray and encourage everybody to come out Sunday, and um, it's up to you, but I encourage everybody just to come and continue getting the Word of God. Amen. There's prayer tomorrow, Saturday, and um, uh, hopefully we'll see you at service. Amen. God bless and good night.